Oh, well, hello everyone, this is Daniel, and um, I'm going to be talking to you about um, what does what things that God hates. Um, Alright, so I'm going to go with one of the things that he hates the most, which is death. He is a God of life, um, he does not want to talk about, you know, things of death, or what basically starts death, or anything like that. He knows his children are the sheep, but he does not uh, believe in um, causing death unless um, that thing also is causing death. But he is a God that um, loves his creation. And when his creation dies um, and does not meet him ever again, he gets really, really, I mean, very... Not depressed, but really, uh, he really wails a lot for his pe for the people that he created that um, no longer meet him because you know his creation. It is create it is creation that he created, and he he takes in joy. He t he takes joy in creating his people, animals, rocks, wherever he creates. He takes real pride in creation. His creation is like the most pure beauty in, that you can ever imagine. That beauty is just beyond all recognition. So he does not like it when you know things is, his things die. He has his um, you know everlasting uh, paradise that um, he creates for his people that he can call life, perfect life, perfect peace, everything that he loves. So anything, so so anything that he creates is created by his um, not bad pride, but really good pride. He he really creates for the cause, just so he can. And he's a he is a ruler. He rules over his authority for his creation. So that one thing he hates most is the thing that causes death and death. And he also, um, another thing he hates the most is what harms his creation. And I can tell, I can give you a list of things that he, um, this has, um, but all of them harm his creation. Lying even harms his creation because lying can also, um, lying can cause death, um, in certain ways. It can also cause, um, great, um, drama with a, his creation, so also um, anything that creates much drama or harm to his creation is another thing he hates. And, all, and another thing, the third thing he hates is, you know, anything that is, you know, anything that makes his creation feels really feel really bad or makes his creation feel like is worthless or makes his makes his creation feel emotionally, you know, it makes it that, that his creation feels all kind of bad feelings. He does not like it when someone else does it to them. An evil person would do that. Those are the kind of things he really detests. So another thing he hates. Now we're getting to the minor details. Um, he hates it when um, when people go and do other things other than the godly things um, for the whole life, for their um, many parts of their lives, because he is a jealous God. He created his creation, and it was really hard for him to create his own creation. His creation should be the one that bows down to him, respects him, and um, you know. It's another thing he hates is when people don't respect his um, that when he when cre when creation does not respect him because you know one way people cannot respect God is becoming Satanists or idolaters or anything like that. And then another thing he hates is when his creation annoys him. Yes, repetition. Anything like repetition or um, when they cry out all the time and they're not patient when everyone just 
<laughs> mocks him. I mean, he's not a god that would be mocked, and he anything that brings him out of order is another thing he dislikes. So, yeah, I mean, our god is not a god to be mocked. And, um, let's go to back to repetition because, um, anything that's repetitive or, you know, like repetitive music or anything like that, that kind of thing he just dislikes a lot. He'd rather have everyone just uh, bowing down to him continually, not repetitively. So if we can't continue to bow down to God, he will um, accept us. So, what's another thing he dislikes? Um, mockery. And he is not a God to be mocked. And then there's another thing that he dislikes is, you know, the fact that we're polluting the earth. I mean, you know, I tried to make my... I tried to make it so I don't really pollute the earth, but you know. Anyone that invents anything that um, really likes to pollute or anything like that, I try not to do that, but you know. That's, that's fine. But anyone that, you know, cuts down trees, they can cut down the trees whenever they need the paper from the trees or wood, but they have to cut down a specific type of tree for paper or for wood. Any other tree will not do. He'd rather have any tree that is cut down be for wood beams or any kind of wood that's like well, like a table or a chair. And that's pretty much it. We can also mine from metal and um, metal that is uh, very strong or you know anything like that. Today we've gone a little far. I mean, I can still be as efficient in my preaching as anything else, but you know, it's still, um, you know, we have to still respect God, and then I looked up World War II and all that, but basically, another thing he dislikes, I mean, he does not like, he does not really believe in war, that's what God does not believe in, and he, and he really does not like violence and all that, but that's harming, you know, he does not believe in these things. But then there's a, another thing that bothers God, um, harming the children spiritually. Yes, God absolutely hates when people are harmed spiritually, especially children. His children are sp precious to him. And of course, all children that are young are precious to him. And if anyone is to harm a child spiritually, to us, it would be like if we harmed a baby and killed it. To him, when we... You know, say things like, um, you know, I don't know, like, a curse word to a baby. That's like, as if we, um, to us, we ended up, um, killing a baby right in front of its mother. And just said evil things to the mother and left. And then, you know what the mother would do, right? You know, God has his perfect law. But uh, then again... Let's just go to the things he loves, and we have absolutely plenty of time. He loves it when people respect God, or himself, and then we, he also loves it when um, people are loving, kind, protective, you know? He loves it when people bring peace, um, when people are self-control, and of course he loves it when People live clean lives, not literally clean lives, but you know, a clean life as in spiritually clean. And even though we're sheep and even though we sin, Jesus can take our sins for us and then die with it. And then, you know, the sin is gone because he's perfect. And even though we do things that God absolutely really detests, and look up the um, Proverbs part, you know, the 14 things that God really detests in Proverbs, you know, look it up on the internet, if you do not have my kind of Bible. 
look up the 14 go things that God really detests because, you know, he, de he, de he detests a lot, but there are a lot of groups and categories that God really dislikes. And yes, our God can be really annoyed sometimes at what we do. And he really can be detestful of what we do. And anything like, um, you know, erecting an idol, he is very jealous and that feels very dirty. Anything sexual that harms, he knows what is harm. You know, he basically built him upon himself of what offends him because he was perfect. He knows what offends him. And he knows what, and his children know what offends him. You know? So, um, brethren, I know that a lot of people are feeling, you know, a lot of misery about certain things. Whoops. Oh, did I kill this? Right. You know that God must uh, feel misery right now or anything like that, but you know, every life matters, and especially to God. And if you ruin someone's life, not only is that mother's life ruined, or any friends, any of his friends' life ruined, and all the people around him, but our God Almighty, you just made our God Almighty really upset and really sad. Anything that um, kills a person, he really gets sad. And then there was blasphemy. That is no joke. Um... He's practically gotten over this. There's real blasphemy, which is, you know, direct mockery of God, which is he's not going to take because, especially of the Holy Spirit, because if he mock his Holy Spirit, that just, you know, say, that just says that he, he cannot be trusted, the one that mocks the Holy Spirit, or she. But anyone that, you know, by the way, anyone that makes it into a movie, I mean, mocking the Holy Spirit is one thing, but causing another to mock the Holy Spirit, that is, oh my goodness, I have no words for this. God was in great tears after this movie came out. Let me tell you what the movie was, was called. Um, before, I, he, when his memory was strong, he would uh, tell me not to do this, um, only, f but only for once. But now he's gotten over it, and he still has a uh, lot of memory about it. People are continually doing to do that, and he's gotten over it. But I mean, he's very forgiving, so that's why he's gotten over it. But Have you heard of the movie, well, there's Ferdinand, which is exactly like this movie, but have you heard of this movie called, um, it's not the Nativity, but The Star. Have you heard of the movie called The Star? Um, I know approximately 100,000 children have seen it, or more. I don't know how many actually saw it, but, you know. It'll be upwards to half a million. And I bet that um, a tenth of those, like um, 50,000, mocked the Holy Spirit because of that movie. And that's in the reign of um, Saul killing um, the tens of thousands, or maybe, um, maybe even David killing tens of thousands. Or, I don't know. But that's like killing tens of thousands of people. And, you know, it's like, for the kids that um, deliberately did that when they were older, I mean, he, that man will be responsible for those kids' lives that he pretty much damned. And that man will not get any, any will not get his innocence back. 
And by the way, if you damn as, um, if you damn e enough people, you will perish. And if it's like one or more, but I know if it's enough, it's it's perishable. I mean, another way to mock the Holy Spirit is to, I don't know, purposely make people damned. I know it's funny because you don't understand what I mean, but to make it make the person literally, you know, have the Holy Spirit um. You know, literally have a person damp like damned. Um, to literally say, "Oh, that person is no longer going to make it to heaven because of me." You know, that's um, one way to mock the Holy Spirit because that is just saying to God, "Oh, look, I've taken your people. Aren't I good?" I, I would never do that, guys, but this man did that, and there are many ways to um, perish, but there's at least three ways to make yourself perish. Purposely um, take the blood of the children that you know that would have a spirit, and then take it in front of him, and, and take away from them without even them knowing it. And mocking the spirit that way, or um, directly mocking him by making him make him like the de like slandering the spirit. That's another way. And the third way, um, yeah, another way is it's like one of them is taking the children away. Another way is slandering him. And the third way is just you know, like literally direct blasphemy when not when you call him evil but you know make him like a sat satanic ritual so yeah um it's bad and one of them is just less, indir less is less direct than the other one but let me tell you taking people's lives on purpose is a blasphemy of the Holy Spirit and do not get me wrong So, these are all the things that God detests. Um, he also gets really annoyed at people that um, think that, you know, they're doing His will when they're actually hypocrites. That's another thing, because hypocrites were um, people that would um, start, I don't know, like bar fights or, or sexual people, especially, especially sexually immor immoral. And to call people, like, to call God's children or everyone else, you know, sexual beings, that was really offensive to God. Then there was also, what did I do? Then there was also, um, um, the drunkard's problem. Oh man, I forgot what I was going to say. I killed something. But yeah, there's also the drunkard's problem. Um, I mean, let's just talk about the drunkard's problem because um, there was a 1920s that happened, yes. And um, then in the 20s and 30s, and then it came in the 30s that people were having sips of wine and then they became drunkards. Then in the 40s, they started to have lots of wine. They were married, but then the 60s came. That's grandchildren generation. 60s came, and then everyone rebelled. Then right now, we have the generation of now. Because, well, yeah. I know that my grandparents, well, I'm not gonna, <laughs> you know, not gonna really slander them or anything like that. They have occasional wine, you know. But somewhere in my family line, depression came. I think it came from, you know, clubs after, you know, Great Depression or anything like that. But it's still before. 
I think it started off very deeply rooted. Deeply rooted in the Irish tradition and in, in Italian tradition. I believe part of my family was from Rome and other places like that. Especially in some areas like that, there was beer, there was um, wine. More wine than beer. But you do know that um, wine causeth people to be uh, really sad or angry or anxious. I read upon that, so I, that's good. When I read that, um, I thought, hmm, that's part of my sort of trait. What do I mean by that? My mom is really in a deep, well, let's say that she has mm, some depression problems. My dad, well, he has anger issues. Not real ones, just very minor. But they're still very good people. I'm, I, gotta, I gotta say, my dad is a true, is for the truth and only for the truth. My mom is, you know, a true believer and only meant for the spiritual ways of God and wonders of miracles and all that. But my sense, I've been not twice as amazing. Well, I don't know, like I've been set up in a situation because, in my opinion, because I was born with autism, now I have Asperger's. But now, that I look at it, I was thinking, hmm, where does autism come from? And why are more and more people having it? When I look at it, there was a chance that he'll become a drunkard or anything like that. I would say that, um, eh, I would say around 18 million people in America are drunkards. That's pretty much a framework. And um, 29 million children are basically, you know, yeah, pretty much uh, uh, sons and daughters of drunkards. So when you add that all up, the child is twice as likely. So the children are basically twice as populated in America than the parents of the drunkards. They're twice as populated. But they didn't that um, start early? Because I would say in America sometime there's a small population back in the 1800s where it was like one in like 150 that you would be a person that was drunkard, but then it became, you know, one in fifteen. You know, then it became. You know, I mean, back in the early times in America, there were very few drunkards. There were very few because they were respectful men and they did not want to drink anymore. And when the Revolutionary War ended. I mean, there were very few drunkards. But not as few as when I was born, but you know. But then autism started. Why did it start? I think it, the, reason be, the reason of that is because it's a generational thing. Because of what wine causes, you know, you know let's say, wine causes, um, what is it called? Four minutes of that. Uh, something preferred, yeah. So basically the child was born with the alcohol effects. They were basically born disabled because of alcohol in their system. But some of the face traits are like those of with autism. And basically, you know, when someone started early, like drinking early, that was like one in a thousand back in the 1800s. And the same time in 1989. So back in 1989, that was one in a thousand for um, someone to drink when they're like 15. Yeah, one in a thousand. Now it has become um, one in 20. Right now we have 
autistic people being born into this world like it's 1 in 50. And it's because they're, um, back in the 50s it was like 1 in 50 that people would drink early. Do you get what I mean? So it's like, let's say, 70, like 75 years of generational curses due to the drinking that these people portray because you know it's like the great grand like the great granddaughters drank too much early and then it started early and then later on all right there not be any later on these people would end up, end up um, carrying that um, young drinking later on until they realize how bad it is or how bad it was back in the 70s and you know right now there's a lot of people being born with autism and it's still carrying on it's not going to stop I don't know if that's a fact or if that's something that they haven't figured out yet but whatever you put in, in your stomach doesn't they follow you, for sure. But it can really um, damage your body. It doesn't mean you're defiled, it just means your body's damaged. So please, take my advice and um, love God and also respect God and also make sure that um, you do what God tells you because we're having generational curses right now. We're having people literally being rebellious and then many people are also, you know, there's a lot of problems with people that really uh, think that they're um, doing what they want, but instead, not what God wants, and He wants to protect us. He really does. Because if there's anything that really bothers Him, it's either the, our safety or um, our mental safety, or even God's, um, how offended God gets, because, it, you know, here was all his creation that, um, his creation, you know, was the one that um, ended up um, causing the problem of his offense, because he's a God that created for a vast amount of time. He, his hands were very full when he created us. It took a lot of time for him to create us, and it took a lot of effort, and it really took a lot of stress. And not in a physical way, but, you know, in a uh, spiritual way, so please respect God, because he did a lot of work for us, okay? Alright, I'll be done now, okay? Bye.